If you're gonna try to kill a Florges with a special attack, you're gonna have a bad time. This thing has absolutely nuts special bulk at base 154, and it actually hits harder than people think with 112 special attack. It can function really well as support with Wish, or even Synthesis to keep the homie healthy, and Combine can allow it to boost to destroy stuff with Stab Moonblast, and it has coverage with Energy Ball and things like Psychic Noise. But if you want to see the special world burn, you can use Assault Vest to give an extra 50% to special defense, and it gets a lot of help from Terra Steel defensively, or even Terra Fire Terra Blast to bop switch-ins. Overall, Florges is pretty versatile and honestly just doesn't get enough respect. Look, sometimes even the ugly flower Pokemon need some love. I think Florges is just a weird lady, and I like her. If you like interesting Pokemon, you should probably just hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I would love for you to be part of the journey. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Dawn Fan. It says he will spin, but let me tell you something. He will not spin, at least in a rapid fashion, because I have a Frost Last lead, and my Ghost-type ass is going to be blocking that. So, at this point, we have an interesting matchup. I can freely set up a layer of Spike just because I know this thing cannot spin, but also, if it wants to knock off or Earthquake, it's going to break my Focus Sash, and uh, it's something I'm willing to go for here. So, Frostlast does sprinkle around the old Spikes over there, and their Barefoot Asses are going to be feeling the pain. So, they decide to set up the Stealth Rock of their own, which is honestly fine with me because now I still have my Sash intact, and I also I threaten this thing, of course, with a nice little Stab Ice Beam, which... While this thing does have sturdy, we're, bo we're both going to live on 1 HP, kind of guaranteed. So I do want to try to prioritize getting that chip on this thing, because Donphan is annoying. It's very defensive, and uh, while it doesn't quite do enough to knock it down to sturdy, I also am able to take an Earthquake, which is fantastic, but also I do Cursed Body that. So I disable it, say, hey, go ahead and never do that again. This is a nice area, and you're just ruining it with your Earthquakes. It fucking cracks all over the place. And this is why we can't have nice things. So they decide to switch out the Dawn Fan. I kind of imagine they switch here. So I decide to go for the Shadow Ball as a nice little mid-ground. Try to see what they want to bring in. And of course, it is going to be the Weather Boy. So old Toilet Bird over here is going to, uh, of course, make it rain. And also take a Shadow Ball to the face. And while it doesn't do a whole lot of damage because this thing's bill is thick as hell, I do get the special defense drop, which is nice. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe they just decide to go for the Surf here. So I decide... I'm going to Destiny Bond. If I could get rid of this Pelipper, it's going to make my life a whole lot easier against some ranged shenanigans. But they actually just end up switching out, and they're going to go into the Magnazone. Magnazone does come in on uh, my attacks pretty nicely, take some damage from the spikes. But the Destiny Bond on the switch here is actually really nice, because while this thing definitely wants to knock me out here, now it pretty much cannot with that Destiny Bond up. So I'm free to lay another layer of spikes down, and uh, there's a couple reasons why the spikes are nice here. First of all, uh, the fact that the Dawn Fan was at so low health with two layers of spikes, uh, I'm feeling like I'm pretty close to being able to get that thing to die on switch in, and it's going to ensure that they have no way to get rid of them. So I go for the extra pair of spikes here, as now they decide to switch into uh, the freaking Fez and Dippity. This thing is, is super annoying to kill, and also don't really know what this thing wants to do to me here, so I'm like, you know what, they saw the, they just saw the Destiny Bond. I'm thinking maybe they don't attack here, so I'm going to take this opportunity to just lay down even more spikes. Now it's guaranteed that the Dawn Fan dies on switch in, and also it's going to be really good chip damage on everything. But it turns out they actually just go for the play rough. They are going to knock me out here, so I should have gone for that Destiny Bond, except I do at least curse body the play rough. So I'm like, uh, yeah, go ahead and stop doing that, and I'm just going to go ahead and die real quick. So with Frost Last down, I now get a switch into whatever I like. So listen, Pheasantipity, extremely specially defensive, and annoying but what i decide is you know scissor actually has a pretty good opportunity to try to get some swords dance action going here bullet punch looks like nice coverage and honestly uh this scissor has the potential to get a little mini sweep going here so they decide to go for the u-turn here not going to do a whole lot of damage um and they are going to end up actually deciding to go into the dawn fan basically for a sack switch because as it comes in he's like hey how's it going over here and now my feet are literally bloody and i am dead so that uh, it takes care of the Don fan, which is perfect because rather than attacking here, I decide to go for the Swords Dance. If my claws were not sharp enough, we are now extra meaty and extra sharp. Big meaty claws over here with that attack boost is uh, looking pretty threatening. So, one of the things that I do have in it as an answer is going to be the Magnazone. This thing takes a bullet punch nicely and uh, does threaten me with the um, it stab Thunderbolt. So, I decide while I can't bullet punch, I do have the coverage with the close combat. And sadly, it seems like this Magnazone is going to be faster. It does outspeed 
while it gets off the Thunderbolt, we are able to live. Because again, my claws are meaty. We're able to <laughs> basically take that, fire off the close combat, beat the absolute hell out of the UFO, and we are not being abducted today. So while that takes that thing out, that's actually super great. That's a, uh, a pretty hard-hitting, kind of annoying mod to deal with. And also, I take some Life Orb Recoil, which does suck because I have like one more attack left in me. And uh, they're going to take this opportunity to get the, the the rain advantage on their side. They go into the Basque Legion and take a whole bunch of damage from the spikes here. While I'm like, okay, this thing obviously outspeeds. It's quick as hell in the rain. And I can get off a bullet punch. And while it doesn't quite knock it out, I'm able to get a huge amount of damage there. And that is actually great. Because what that means is now this Basque Legion cannot switch back in. If it wants to switch out, it can't come back in due to the spike. So the effects of the Frost Lass... Just sticking around here. So, I do have the Shaman, who is one little fella who uh, definitely lives kind of anything this thing wants to throw at me here. And honestly, it feels good because Basque Legion was a great win con on their end, and that thing is quite scary. I'm also going to check out the rain turns. They have one more turn left of rain, and while they are going to be faster here, I decided to just click the Psychic. That's because Seed Flare always misses, and I definitely do not want to. I can't afford to miss here. And also, the Psychic covers for a switch into the Pheasant So, it does end up knocking itself out with that wave crash. Does a whole bunch of resisted damage to the Shaman in the process, which actually now puts me in range to die from that Pheasant And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go right back into this asshole. And at full health, this thing definitely lives a Psychic. Not before dealing with a whole bunch of damage, though, because the Spikes are going to do its thing. And also, I am fast, so I can go for that Psychic with the Choice Specs. going to do a bunch of damage. Shows me it's going to be probably not fully specially defensive, which is great. But sadly, I do go down to the Poison Jab. So I'm kind of in a position here where I have a couple different options. What I decide... Uh, kind of seems nice here is uh, while Florges is definitely a fellow who enjoys the special defense, a physical attacking poison type is not exactly the best option for me, but I'm a madman. I'm going to do it anyway. I bring in the flower and Wanda's like, hey, uh, this seems like a bad place to be, but psych like, bitch, I am prepared for this. I have the Terra Steel. Surely they're going to go for that poison jab. It's going to give me a free turn to be able to uh, hopefully knock this thing out with a Terra Blast because I also I got the steel coverage in the form of blasting fools with my Terra shenanigans. So I put the steel freaking axe on my head and Florgis is actually looking pretty well positioned for the remainder of this match. So uh, they actually end up going for the Roost. They probably kind of called out the Terra here because obviously if I go into Florges, I've got some type of type changing in mind. But uh, I throw a freaking rock at this thing's face. I don't often see Terra steel Terra blast, but uh, it's literally steel boulder at this thing's neck and it is able to barely hang on. But the good news is, I resist literally everything this can throw at me. The play rough doesn't hit that hard. And one more Terra Blast is going to be able to take care of it. And with that thing gone, Florges is actually in a fantastic spot. Because, look, they have two Pokemon left. And they're also very scary ones that work together. It's going to be the Pelipper, who is able to come in here and get that rain up. But most importantly, that's now going to enable the Ludicolo in the back. But the good news is that they are both special attackers. And Florges eats special attacks for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I can go for the Moonblast here. Actually, outspeed almost is going to be enough to take care of it. It honestly doesn't really matter because a, a rain-boosted Surf does, like, nothing to me. And I'm still chilling at above half, which allows me to go for the freaking Moonblast once more. Knocks out the Pelipper. And now we have the main issue at hand, which is going to be that Ludicolo. Plus... They also have not used their Terra, so I'm really feeling like, hold on, this thing could actually pull out the little late game sweep, and this pineapple is the pineapple of death here. So, comes in, does take a whole bunch from spikes, and uh, while I know that this thing could potentially Terra, Moonblast is surely my best option here. They are going to go ahead and get that little late action Terra, and now it comes down to what this thing wants to do. It's going to be Terra Poison, which is unfortunate for me because Moonblast is now no longer going to be super effective, but honestly, the main thing I'm prioritizing right now is Chip on this Ludicolo. So, it is, of course, able to outspeed. I can live a Hydro Pump at half health, which is insane. That's a Life Orb boosted Hydro Pump in the rain. Florges is able to live and actually get some pretty meaningful Chip with that Moonblast. So, here's the thing. One more Hydro Pump does finish me off, but I did pretty much what I needed to do in that I really just needed some Chip against this thing because while I have two Pokemon remaining, the bad news is Choice Scarf Staraptor is not going to be able to outspeed this thing in the rain. It has doubled speed and uh, with that Swift Swim ability, it's very scary and of course Arcanine gets blasted by a Hydro Pump. So with that Life Orb chip that we saw from that last attack, here's what I'm thinking. I can go into the Staraptor first and while we're not going to outrun the rain turns, what I can do is 
force them to knock me out with an ice beam, which is gonna happen. The thing is running quick as hell. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And that takes out Star Raptor. But it also forces another turn of that Life Orb chip. And now I'm feeling like it's at a point where Arcanine can come in and uh, Arcanine's in a dangerous spot here. Listen, it's raining. I'm looking in the face of a fake ass poison type water guy and a Hydro Pump kills me. But I do have the extreme speed for the priority and the Moon Blast from Floor just put this thing likely into range where the extreme speed kills and it is gonna be just enough to finish off the game. So that was extremely clutch. That Ludicolo is always scary. Listen, rain is just very hard to go up against, but uh, we're able to make it happen and that is going to be the end of the match. So super fun game there, but we are not quite done yet. Hey, if you've made it this far into the video and you enjoy these ones that have multiple battles, let me know by hitting that like button. It really does help out. And uh, let's jump into it. All right, so it looks like my opponent has a little bit of like a pseudo rain situation going on. And that is kind of scary. It's going to be wet out here and Shaman's fine with that. So they actually end up leading off with the Jolteon, probably just for a nice little fast pivot. And I decide to just lead off with the Hedgehog because honestly, Seed Flare looks pretty solid on everything. So they do go for the Volt Switch there. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but now it allows them to switch into whatever they like. And they actually decide to just go into the Politoed. So Buddy comes in looking like a proud toddler that got himself into the candy drawer. It is going to activate the rain with that Drizzle ability. However, yeah, Seed Flare definitely just is going to absolutely obliterate this thing. They probably just kind of prioritized trying to get that rain up, thinking that... Uh, Kingdra has a really good potential to sweep, which honestly, Kingdra is quite scary. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They decide to go into the Kingdra here, and as I'm looking at it, you know, this seems like a pretty good time to go full Water Hog out here. I go for the Terra Water just because it's going to cover for basically any super effective hit this wants to throw at me, whether it's going to be the Hurricane or just something like the Ice Beam. But most importantly, knowing that I can at least live an attack gives me a chance to go for a Seed Flare, which with the Choice Specs, I believe has a chance to kill here. So they do go for the Hurricane, and that is going to throw my little ass in a Spin Cycle. While I am barely able to hang on, if you were a Hedgehog in a washing machine, you would be confused too. And now I have to try to bust through Confusion, which is actually going to happen because I'm able to get the Seed Flare off and it is barely not enough to kill the Kingdra. So this thing is honestly the biggest threat at this point. And uh, I do kind of want to conserve the Shaman. It might be useful later. That 100 speed tier is pretty nice. And I decide, you know what? Floor just actually switches into this thing literally all day long. It doesn't look like it's choice specs damage. And without stab on a hurricane, Floor just is going to be able to come in here. And uh, I'm like, oh, did you do something to me? Hurricane does literally nothing, which is... Absolutely amazing, and now this thing is vulnerable to pretty much anything here. I imagine they probably switch out, but they're actually just going to stay, go for another Hurricane, try again, actually end up getting a Confusion once again. But uh, listen, Wanda does not give a damn about these ducks floating above my head. I am confused, but I'm able to break through and throw the moon at Buddy. So that's going to take care of the Kingdra, and that thing is a huge threat out of the way. It's kind of the only Mon really that synergizes offensively with the rain anyway, but uh, it's good to see that thing gone. So now they decide to go into the Jolteon and the problem with Jolteon is you're not gonna be able to kill me with special attacks. I don't care what this thing has. Turns out it does have thunder. Uh, so it is able to get pretty much the highest amount of damage possible. And plus I'm confused, so it wasn't really that bad of an idea, but I'm able to absolutely shrug off <laughs> the thunder there and also break out of the confusion and two hit KO with a Moonblast, which is absolutely amazing. Now they realize that Jolteon is uh, something that's really good speed-wise, so they're going to end up going for the Volt Switch there. But honestly, Florges, this is actually just a modest set that is uh, max special attack. And I do hit pretty hard with Moon Blast, so I'm just firing the moon at whatever wants to come in here. And they decide, damn, I cannot kill this Florges, but one way I can actually beat it is by becoming the Florges. So they're going to turn into me, and this is kind of annoying. While uh, my Moon Blast isn't going to do too much there, I've taken some chip, and I don't really want to uh, waste this thing just quite yet. So I do have a plan. Now, I know what this thing's moveset is, of course, because it's quite literally me, but I can actually go into uh, the Frost Blast here, and as I come in freely on a Moon Blast, it is going to break my potential Focus Sash, but I know that uh, they see the kill in range there, and this is going to allow me to just go for a Destiny Bond. So as I get the Destiny Bond off, of course, I am faster, and I'm like, please don't switch out. They do, in fact, stay in, and one more Moon Blast is going to kill the Frost Blast, but also I'm like, hey, you know what? That Moon Blast you were just doing, I know you're going to die in a second, but you actually you go ahead and you can't use that in the afterlife. I disable it, which is hilarious, and then I just take it down with me. So honestly, Ditto going down is 
really nice to see because Ditto always, literally, whenever I go, am going up against a Ditto, it seems to be uh, pretty damn useful. So that thing could have been a threat. Take it out nice and easy. And at this point, we have ourselves some nice little empty battlefield action. So looking at their team, what they have remaining, I kind of figured they go into something like the Hitmon top, whether that or the Jolteon. Turns out it is going to be the Jolteon as I am going into Florges here, which is seems like I potentially anything other than Thunder, I can live. So they go for the Volt Switch and I live it with one HP. I'm telling you, Florges does not die, especially <laughs> hitting it on the special side. So this allows uh, a nice little pivot into the Feraligator. And Feraligator is kind of another mod I've been seeing in the back that has the potential to be very scary. And now as I see a two hit KO with the Moonblast, it kind of forces them to knock out the Florges here. But I'm thinking, you know, they still have the Terra in the back pocket. And one thing that could be really bad for me is like a defensive Terra and then a Dragon Dance here. So what I decide to do is switch into the Espeon as they actually just go for the liquidation and it turns out max attack for Alligator definitely just kills me. So the reason why I go Espeon there is while it didn't end up working out, if it was like a Terra Steel or something and then a Dragon Dance, I'd be able to Mirror Herb, copy the speed and then be faster and knock it out. It would have been really satisfying, but in general, Playing from behind, I kind of just expect people to try to go for risky maneuvers like a Dragon Dance in that situation, but of course, yeah, I pay for it and it was a dumb idea. So, at least at this point, I can go into a nice little revenge switch, the GOAT revenge killer of all time. I'm able to finish him off with a Brave Bird, and Staraptor is an absolute monster. So, down goes the Gator, and at this point, they are down to two Pokemon left. Now, it's of course going to be old Spiky Boy over here, the Jolteon, along with the Hitmontop in the back. So, I know that uh, Staraptor is going to be super useful for taking out that Hitmontop as a win condition. So what I decided to do here is, rather than just staying in and going for the Brave Bird, I want to ensure that I have as much HP as possible to live a potential Mach Punch uh, from that Hitmontop. And I don't need to take more recoil than needed. So what I can do is actually just switch back into the Florges here and uh, sponge up a nice little Volt Switch. While it does knock me out, forces them to switch out and uh, the little sack switch in this situation is going to be nice for me because now I get a match up uh, against the Hitmontop and that's exactly what we need. So I don't know if this thing's Intimidate or if it's going to be Technician with, you know, the Mach Punch or whatever this thing's going to be working with. I decide just to scout this out, I'm going to let the Hedgehog kind of <laughs> sacrifice himself. I go into the Shaman here and at this point I do have uh, cover. I am decide to go for the Psychic just because I know I'm going to miss a fucking Seed Flare because... It seems to miss more than you'd think. Now, it turns out it also does have the fake out paired with it. Priority is going to be able to take me out. It also shows it's going to be Sucker Punch. Uh, they decide over the Mach Punch, which uh, does take out the Shaman, but it's kind of fine because it shows us, you know, what we needed to know about the Hitmon Top. And it should be in a spot where, you know, I can either go into Arcanine for an Intimidate or I can just go right into the Star Raptor. I decide... You know, Star Raptor is not afraid of no Sucker Punch shenanigans. I can bring this thing in, and here's the thing. My main worry at this point is, well, a couple things. First of all, I imagine that Hitmontop, if it's gonna go for the Terra, it's going for it right now. So, I actually instead go for the U-turn. I wanna, basically, Star Raptor is my win condition here, and I need to conserve this thing as much as possible. Now, turns out they actually do not Terra, and they just stay in, just doing his little goofy dance over there. And it's kind of a good middle ground play because this allows me, you know, switch into Arcanine. I can get the Intimidate as they actually try to triple Axel, which I am going to be able to avoid, luckily. Not going to do a whole lot of damage to me anyway. Um, but this is going to allow now the, uh, I'm just going to go for a curse. I feel like, you know what, this Hitmontop can't really do a whole lot to me here. And especially after a defensive boost, uh, I should be fine. So it turns out that now they're actually going to go ahead, commit that Terra. It's going to be Terra fighting, which is why they don't go for it against the Staraptor. Uh, I was also just mainly worried about Star Raptor taking too much Brave Bird chip to the point where, you know, a Mach Punch is able to finish it off, and then I would be in a real bad spot. But now, Arcanine is totally fine here with this thing's fist on its head. It's going to be able to do, you know, a solid chunk of damage. However, I did get that Intimidate. Now at plus one defense, uh, we are feeling pretty nice here. Now, a close combat with that Terra at plus one is going to be not even able to do half to me. This Arcanine is honestly pretty nuts. So yeah, after some leftover recovery, we're looking at pretty damn healthy after our little bite, little, nothing like a little bite out of an apple to just get you feeling good in the middle of a battle. Am I right? So uh, sadly I am slower now because of that curse. And as long as there's no crits, we're totally fine. They can go for another close combat. The good thing is it's actually gonna drop that defense even another level. And me at plus one attack, a flare blitz should be able to destroy this thing. So we've gotten ourselves in a little bit of a wacky endgame situation here where I was just super afraid of what was going to Terra here. So the Flare Blitz does take care of the Hitmon top and with that thing being gone, we are kind of in a spot where Arcanine cleans it up because 
This is, of course, the, the famous Curse Extreme Speed Arcanine. You should definitely go watch that video if you haven't already. This thing is super fun to use and nobody expects the setup because, to be honest, I forget that this thing even learns Curse. But, of course, their final Pokemon is just going to be that Jolteon. And with the amount of chip that we have on the fella... Yeah, in extreme speed should be able to finish it off for us and that is exactly what is going to happen so that's going to be the end of the game there i thought it was just kind of a, a goofy match i'm just out here messing around having a good time with it which is why it's so amazing that it seems like so many of you are interested in this type of content honestly i just have a whole lot of fun with it and uh it makes me really happy that you guys enjoy so for real thank you guys so much and i will catch you next time peace out